Kevin Brady. Let me, let me make one comment just to help you. When we get into the question and answer period, we're going to try to get you know as many questions as possible. So uh, try to make your answers quick, and he'll kind of cut you off. If you need to rambling on <laughs> nice to listen to if we had six hours. <laughs> I completely understand. Go ahead. Any kind of time or anything like that? Uh, five minutes. minutes. Yeah, okay, five minutes. Yeah, we'll take, yeah, five minutes for three to five minutes for your opening. We'll tell you when you got a minute to go. Okay. So, yeah, man. Thank you. Well, I am Scott Baker. Uh, I know some of you. I'm running for U.S. Congress. And I think we have a real opportunity to take back control of our government for Americans, conservative. We need conservatives in the Congress. We need conservatives all throughout, from, from soup to ship, from local government, state government, all the way up to national government. We, we need new people there. We need new leadership. Uh, our current representative's been there 13 years. He's going to 14. He's asking for another term. And in that time that he's been in office, we've gone from uh, balanced budgets to well over a trillion dollars in deficits, trillions of dollars in debt, national debt. Now, not all of that's his fault, but he certainly hasn't been effective at stopping it. We need a stronger voice. We need somebody who can speak boldly, like Ronald Reagan did. Speak boldly. We need bold colors, not pale pastels. Uh, I'm a Christian conservative. I think that we are a Christian nation. Uh, our heritage, our foundation, our culture is all based on Christian principles and values. Uh, that's not to say anybody is required to be Christian in this, in this nation. We should keep it that way. There should be no religious test, but the founders were incredibly wise in the way that they stated what they did. That there should be nothing to abridge the right to peacefully assemble or to, to just worship as you like. But they also clearly, it's documented, well documented in all historical documents, they also clearly documented that we are a Christian nation, that they used the Bible, they used biblical understanding, and they used history as their guide to teach, and they were all Christian men. Many of them were theologians, actually, the Declaration, signed of the Declaration of Independence. Uh, I think that's important. I think Christian values are important. I, I am anti-abortion. I think that's an important stance. I think that a culture, a society and culture that is willing to determine when a life is useful at one end of the spectrum is just as likely or more likely uh, to begin at the other end of the spectrum to say, well, if we can decide it as a child when a life is useful, then we can decide when an older person is less useful or a handicapped person. I think that that, uh, that type of thinking is what led uh, to the problems that Germany had in the, the 1930s. I think it's very dangerous. Um, what do I stand for or why should you choose me? I'm an Air Force veteran. Uh, I spent 10 years in small business. I manage and run a small business design large-scale audiovisual systems, mostly for large churches, theaters, ballrooms, multi-story complexes, very large construction projects, uh, very highly technical, uh, very complex, and it is a very difficult process to get through it. And it's, I always tell people that I train when I'm training people at work, that it's, the, it's not the equipment, it's the relationships that are important. The equipment either does what it does or it doesn't. It's an on-off switch, it's either a billion on-off switches or one on-off switch. My job is to make it simple, but my job mostly is the relationship, building the relationship, working with the architects, the consultants, the committees, the end users, the people who actually use it, the lay users, the lay readers, the church, uh, training them how to use the systems, training them how to, how to do everything. And it's throughout that process, I do it with contractors, uh, subcontractors, and everything. And I, what I do is I take everybody's vision, the people's vision at the beginning of the project, through planning, through coordination, all the way to completion. I do it on budget, on time, all the time. Uh, I understand the budget, I understand how to keep my eye on the end goal, but to build a roadmap for how we get there. And to be flexible along the way, because any, anybody who's been involved in large construction projects understands that it doesn't just happen. Not everything is exactly how you planned it at the beginning. You plan at the beginning and then you have to uh, negotiate along the way sometimes. You have to, sometimes you have to change tax, budgets change. The client's wishes change, what is desired changes. It's all about managing that project so that we get to the end and we have an outcome that the people want, the people that have invested their money and the people that have invested their time. I deal with church committees, steering committees, finance committees, board of trustees, lots of different groups of people. I think that's a skill set that we can use in Congress. I think that the, in a representative, because the, the reality is that there's 434 members right now. Next year, 
we might get two more members because of the census, uh, just in Texas. The California may also get some, but I think their population is, is maintained fairly stagnant. I think that's important. I think that I have the skill set that's required to, to represent you in Congress. I am from Texas. Uh, I, didn't, uh, I wasn't born here, but I grew up here. I've uh, been here since I was three years old, uh, uh, except for a short hiatus when I was in the Air Force, and uh, then when I lived in New Orleans for a couple of years. And I work all over Southeast Texas. I understand Southeast Texas. I understand the people of Southeast Texas, and I think that's an important component to being represented. Thank you. I'm going to, if I may, exercise a little progress and answer the first question. Uh, the current congressman has been there, as you said, for what, 14 years? Or 13, 13 years. He's years going on 14 years. Going on 14. He's uh, worked up the ladder of the organization within Congress. What could you accomplish or what could you bring to the job that somebody with that experience is not providing us? Certainly. Uh, his seniority in the House is definitely a, a, an asset that if he were using it, uh, I think that we would be in uh, much better shape. But unfortunately, I don't feel like he's been using it appropriately. He, for the last several years, he's been one of our chief voices against Barney Frank. Uh, but we seldom hear him say anything to Barney Frank. And in fact, Barney Frank has been quite effective at shutting him down, um, uh, other than a little bit of grandstanding recently, since he was a challenger in the House. Um, his legislative experience is certainly uh, uh, daunting. Uh, he has a lot of experience, but uh, he has consistently, over that time, uh, voted to increase the size of government, which is something we do not need to do. We need to get away from that. We need to shrink the size of government. We need to get rid of, we need to cut spending, cut programs. From 2000 to 2006, the Republicans had a majority in the House, and two wars going on. That sounds like a good excuse to make some spending cuts on things that we don't need, especially when they ended up at $450 billion in deficit at the end of uh, 2006. I think we were at $450 billion. Uh, that sounds like a good excuse to make some spending cuts, and somehow they never managed it, and it was always somebody else's fault. Lots of excuses. Next, 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 I was going to say that. Question is we can to start with uh, Roxy. Um, I would like to know specifically what you would do about the illegal immigration First step, close the borders. <coughs> you can't do anything else until you stop the tap. You can't stop a flood. How, you don't how would you stop? Um, well, we need to work with the, uh, continue to work. There's several programs in place actually that are excellent uh, that uh, are, authorizes local authorities, that ICE trains local authorities to actually pick up illegal aliens as they're, uh, and it, we, there's two components to it, not only to pick them up, but also to categorize them uh, with uh, DNA and uh, fingerprint samples so that we know who they are and we, and we have a record of when they were caught so if they come back we know exactly what, what the problem is and we know who has been here and who has not. Uh, between those programs, working with local law enforcement is the most effective thing we can do. Um, uh, making employers accountable, which actually is already in place as well, but the, the, this administration has actually disabled some of that e-verify system. I think there needs to be more oversight. Uh, from Congress to make sure that that's enforced. Right now it's completely under executive. I don't want to give legislative authority to enforce a law because that's not the, their job. Uh, but to at least some oversight to make sure that it's being enforced on the executive side. Would you be a loud voice? Absolutely. That's, that's one of the main things that we, we need to do. And that's at the top of my list. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've got a two-part question. The first one is, Okay, so you, let's say you get elected, you go, first of all, what would you do in order to be able to figure out how to effectively work with like-minded people, and what's the means for getting something accomplished that you would <coughs> do And then the second part of the question is, you go, and you yourself from being corrupted and changing from your original views. Very good question. The first one, uh, study what works. That's, uh, if, if anybody's ever read my brochure, that's one of the things that I, that I believe is so important. Part of a, America is, uh, and part of just life in general is uh, that we pass the torch from generation to generation. We learn from our history of mistakes. George Washington said, you know, we must look to history so that we can learn the mistakes of the past. Uh, Winston Churchill came this comment. You know, you fail to learn the lessons of history, you're doomed to repeat them. Uh, study what works. Study what. Uh, uh, Newt Gingrich was very effective at, at uh, political strategy with Contract for America and the things that he did. I've been, I've been researching that. 
uh, and studying how he did that, how he got things pushed through. I don't agree with everything Newt Gingrich stands for or did, uh, but he is a brilliant political strategist and uh, learning from what works and what other people have done that's effective. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that uh, I am uh, standing for and one of the, the key components to my platform, I believe, is that I'm, I'm for pragmatic goals. Things we can achieve. Everything that I'm, that I'm, that I, the, the proposals I'm backing and standing by, they're all achievable. They have 70 to 90 percent support across the board. They're achievable. And I'm talking about Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. They're all things that we can get past through the House. It's not a pie in the sky uh, promise that you know. Oh yeah, we're going to promise to shrink government. Well, nobody.